Your game is not always about the competition. It is also about the drive to be better at something you love. Training day after day is only worth when paired with the right guidance. What if you had someone? Someone to observe you, to correct your stance, to perfect your swing. And what if that someone is you? You can be your own golfing buddy when empowered with Slam Dunk, a golfing app designed to help you analyze your performance. Swing by swing, shaping your hard work into a professional game. Slam Dunk, up your game. second video than the first one because me and my co-founders actually did it ourselves. <laughs> we didn't have a budget at all. We took our own DSLR cameras and Saki sitting here actually did the editing and all of that stuff. So the first one you saw was more professional and, and all of that. But anyway, so I am more proud of the second one. So uh, did you guys understand what we do? Pretty simple, huh? So you wa wear a smart watch or a smart band. You go ahead and play your sport. We will analyze your arm movements and then tell you whether you're good at your game or not. Okay? The first sport we took up was cricket. No brainer. All of us know cricket. And I didn't have to explain cricket to my developers. Golf was a more challenging sport because none of us knew which side of the club to even hold. So then all of us took golf lessons and then we took it from there. Yeah? So uh, that is slam dunk. I'm not here to talk about slam dunk alone. When I spoke to Sharanya first, she told me that, you know, tell us more about your story. So I was born in a conservative South Indian family, which put education in front of everything else. Any families, any, oh, yeah, I'm an MSRIT, of course you are. Anyway, so which basically meant if you get 98 in max, it's not even math. If you get 98 in max, what are you good for? Rearing buffaloes. Okay. So my dad actually asked me to keep studying, study, study, study. And that's the way to actually a betterment in life. Well, I kind of did that, yeah. But then I was really passionate about sports. Um, I kind of played basketball in college without my dad's knowledge. Uh, dad, sorry, you're watching now, I know. But yeah, here's a confession. So yeah, so um, I did the run of the mill stuff. I got into engineering and then I studied in a beautiful institution called SSN Engineering College in Chennai. I learned computer science. I really liked computer science. You know why? Thanks to this man. He actually got me a 486 box. Anybody knows what a 486 box is? You do? Oh, wow. Okay. So that, back in 92, okay, um, when I was really hardly 10 years old, he's a government servant, but he spent about 60,000 rupees to actually get me a box. He thought I was actually learning computer science. Okay but I was actually playing games. Nonetheless, I learned a lot in making sure that a doom or a wolf or whatever we used to play used to run on those boxes. So I used to do a lot of hardware assembly. So I went on to study computer science and then got a job in HCL. What is the similarity between these four guys? Yes. Huh? Yes. Yeah, yeah, IIT is okay, fine. Yes. All of these guys are disgruntled engineers who didn't want to continue being engineers. Seriously, right? And they've all gone in to do something else. 
After about seven years of engineering, after staying in a HCL and about three years in another company, I fi figured out that you know, engineering is not for me. Computer science is not for me because I thought computer science was art. If I felt like solving a problem, I wanted to code. I did not want to get requirements from somebody else, right? So what did I do next? I went into what is called as rehab for disgruntled IT programmers. <laughs> I went into Indian Institute of Management, Bangalore. Uh, I put myself through a part-time MBA for three years, which basically meant I had to work. I was married by then, I had an EMI and everything. Uh, so I had to continue doing that and then studied the MBA also and I got pregnant. Oh. Okay, anyway. So yeah, so even till date, my dad actually says, you never went to IIT, but you know, but I actually, you know, said, okay, dad, I'm going to marry an IITian. So that is going to, like, solve your troubles. So I married a very nice man from IIT. So... <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so I went into I am Bangalore, and that's when marketing really, really, really bit me, okay? Um, I grew up in the 80s. Anybody knows what this ad is? Cadres? The iconic ad where the girl runs to the field when the cricketer is actually bowling, they're sports, they're also. So, <laughs> so yeah, I wanted to make ads like this. I actually wanted to go sell ketchup, shampoo, whatever it is, right? So I did a lot of marketing courses, I did strategy, and then I wrote my resume and I went to a great man called Professor J. Ramchandran. He is a professor at IIM Bangalore, he teaches strategy there. I went and gave my resume to him and said, so please, can you forward this to HUL, Hindustan Unilever, or Cadbury's? I want to go and become, you know, just make an ad like this. He has never been angrier in his life. He was like, okay, show me your resume. Okay, I did not talk about the seven years of IT experience I had. What will I tell I was a... So I was doing firmware coding uh, in HCL. What will I explain in my resume for a marketing job for firmware coding? So it's doesn't make sense. So he gave me a um, major gyan, life-changing gyan. So he asked me to carry my baggage. Carry it with you. You understand technology. You love technology. Why do you think that is actually your baggage that you want to leave behind? Put it, put it together. You like marketing? You like technology? Put it together and do what is called digital marketing. Nobody's heard that before in 2008. Now everybody knows. There are courses in Coursera and Think Next or whatever, whatever. That means everybody knows. In 2008, nobody knew what we were talking about. So he said, work with me for six months. I worked with a couple of his clients and then made a beautiful digital marketing strategy for some of the clients in, in the US. And as luck would have it, I went here. <laughs> work we did kind of got the attention of United Spirits, a beautiful company to work for. I spent six months selling liquor, six months doing sports. What a combination, right? So I was actually hired to set up the e-commerce business for RCB. Um, so the guys in United Spirits were just starting up a digital business and I was one of the first few members of that team. I did not know anything about marketing, okay? All I knew was textbook marketing that I am Bangalore thought. It doesn't take you far, believe me. The minute you hit a company, an FMCG company, they will tell you, please unlearn whatever you learned in I am Bangalore. That's lesson number one, okay? So uh, um, uh, another fine gentleman called B. Sridhar, he was head of digital at that time, uh, still is in United Spirits. He gave me an opportunity. He, thought, he saw the drive in me. He said, experience doesn't matter. Come, we will do this together. Okay? We set up the e-commerce business and we exceeded our targets in all, by almost 3x the first year. So yeah, so uh, life was beautiful. I was like really on a high. I was doing well in United Spirits, doing really well in RCB. You know what I did? I quit. Some of my cousins don't speak to me. The guys who like, actually the girls who like Virat Kohli don't speak to me anymore. 
because I never took them to meet Virat. Okay? Why did I quit? Because I saw this scene outside KCA. What is KCA? <laughs> you know what this is? This is actually in Delhi though. Uh, this is actually an under 16 trial. Okay? What the photo is not covering is actually the parents who are on the other side. It is worse than a board exam because only 11 guys make it to the team. Okay? The parents are actually really, really nervous, much more than they were for our 10th and 12th exams. Okay? Because they made a choice. I want to become big in sports. Okay? The amount of technology that is available to pro-level players, especially the guys like Virat or you know, any, any of the A teams in the world, is actually mind-boggling. But these kids do not have any technology access to them. Okay, the maximum are, you know who? The parents. They take quick pictures, quick videos and say, you know what, beta, you are probably twisting your arm a little more. You are moving too close to the wicket. So these are the kind of, you know, uh, incremental changes that they give on the day of the board exam. So that's when wearable technology was taking shape. Again, it was in back in uh, 2014 when nobody knew what wearable technology was. And I came up with this idea of putting wearable technology and sports together. Okay. And where did I go? Went back to college. Went back to Professor J. Ramchandran and said, you know what, I have an idea. Can we, can we do something about it? He actually introduced me to another great man called Rajiv Modi. He is a visionary. He is the CEO of Saskin. He understood wearable technology in 2014 and said, yes, this is the future. Come here, we'll incubate you. Within 10 minutes of my presentation. So we put up a very beautiful team in Saskin, about 10 of us, 10 of us in Saskin. Uh, and then we came up with the first product. I met Saki in Saskin and she's the creative uh, person. She actually decided to join Geek Bar Sports, even though creatives, you know, don't really like us. Uh, and then we kind of smooshed uh, Venkat on board. Venkat is a classmate of mine from IM Bangalore. And now we got him on board and then he is heading technology for us, right? So we did, we did the product, we did all of it, and then we got the attention of all these guys. Bangalore got the attention of all the guys in the world. And we were the best startup, and then we got a great chance to present in front of uh, the who's who of uh, uh, the Prime Minister's office. And we were selected as the top five startups in India. And we had the chance... <laughs> We had the chance of presenting in the Startup India movement that uh, uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi had organized early this year. Um, we got the attention of Samsung. We are one of the preferred partners of, uh, sorry, premier partners of Samsung, where our apps are listed as part of, you know, the gear fit. If you just go and see on the website, we are actually listed as one of the apps alongside Nike. So that is the kind of... <laughs> thanks. So we are all slated to release our next application from uh, in Apple and hopefully we get a lot of support from Apple as well. So fingers crossed. Okay. So um, we've done a lot in sports and we have actually patent across multiple sports, uh, badminton, uh, baseball, etc, etc. But then do we want to continue in sports uh, alone? We want to, you know, uh, pivot a little more. So we were actually thinking of ideas which were much more closer to our heart. I'm a mother, I'm a working mother. Is there something that we can do with wearables for child safety? Is there, we can, is there something that we can do something for women's safety, right? So these are the things that we are looking at right now. And hopefully we'll be able to come up with our next product pretty soon. I'd like to leave a little bit of Gyan. There are only 11 guys who make it to India cricket team. But then there are 11 million guys who know actually how to play the sport and in fact give you better gyan than Sachin Tendulkar himself. So you cannot, even if you cannot make it to the A game with pure sports alone, there are a lot of these combinations which are available. Sports marketing, sports writing, sports psychology, sports medicine. If sports is your passion, mix it up with a skill, mix it up with something that is lucrative, and then you do not have to take up a day job, right? And then you can have fun 24-7, which is what we do at Slam Dunk, right? Thank you guys for this great opportunity.